where uh, Marinus, Marianne, myself, uh, and, and a whole group of other people, Maria uh, Verhaka in particular is the most important person to do most of the work here, um, did this monumental re-review of the literature. Since 1995, there were um, 95 separate investigations that have looked at the, uh, the transmission from one generation to the next, as opposed to 19 at the time. It's a huge expansion in the amount of work that's been done on this question. So we wanted to know, is it still true that uh, that um, association has been robustly, you know, the accumulated evidence has supported that? Um, because the vast majority of evidence was not included in that original review. So here are the findings. Um, first of all, this is a slightly complicated table, but all it's doing is saying, um, to what extent do the adult attachment <coughs> classifications correspond to the infant strain situation uh, um, uh, classifications across all of these studies? And this is sort of four, four, more than 4,000 children in this analysis. The diagonal represents all of the correspondences. Um, and the, the numbers in brackets here are reflecting whether or not this is a, you know, a chance association or whether there are more children in that diagonal than there should be if it was just if there was no association at all. Um, and you know, chance here would be a value of something like one. Um, here you can see values of 16, 14, and 10. So what that means is that there is clearly a very strong, well, let me rephrase that, um, there's clearly statistically highly robust association across all of these studies. The other thing to mention is that more than half of these studies are, were unpublished. We dredged them out of file drawers all around the world, talking to people that we knew. So most, uh, the majority of the studies were actually not published. People had not published them, possibly because they didn't find anything very exciting or that you know, it was relatively old news. So now that's, for those of you who are interested in this kind of thing, that's a really important thing to do because the, 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 the uh, estimates of, of these sorts of effects can be wildly different in published and unpublished research. So this is the kind of net impact when you include as much unpublished research as you possibly can. Um, you can also see there's quite a lot of specificity. So um, if an adult has a secure pattern, their child is much more likely to be uh, uh, secure themselves. Um, and it's not particularly predictive of, of the other classifications, likewise for dismissing and avoidance, and likewise for preoccupation uh, uh, and resistant attachment. Um, another thing to, 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 that was pretty striking when we did this work, here on, the, on this graph you can see the original effect size, um, the, the, so how strong this intergenerational process was. In 1995 it was a correlation, as I said, of 0.47. Um, in 2015 it's dropped pretty dramatically to 0.31. So clearly, as the evidence accumulated, the, the, the accumulated um, impression of how powerful this association is um, has declined. Um, and that's, that's, that's important to take into account. It, it takes the shine, let's say, of how, how you know, uh, substantial this effect is, but it's nevertheless, again, from, a, from a, the point of view of typical studies of social science, it's still a pretty robust effect. It's not trivial by any means. Um, but uh, it, it qualifies it a little bit and suggests that adult attachment is not the only factor here. Um, and it's, it's not quite as dramatic as we originally thought.